So there's a lot of a lot of looking back at the first mission. Do Impossible. we get a rappelling down? Bump, bump, bump. No, bum, we didn't get a rappelling uh, down. Actually, I think they replaced that with the uh, the parachute scene <laughs> with okay. the, the driving off the cliff. Which, by the way, fantastic from Jamie Lee Curtis. So good. Jamie Incredible. Lee Curtis. I don't know how Jamie Lee Curtis didn't get nominated for an Emmy with her performance in this show. I know. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't, did, did, Bernthal did. He did. Which and we're Bern going over later, I think. I think you'd, you'd have to agree that there was some creative misses as well. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I look yeah. at... That's, I look at so that's a big statement, just saying that there were some creative, creative misses. misses. It's he like knows. They, he were trying to blame it on COVID in the audience, yeah. and then he said, he slips in there, also there's some creative... He shit. knows. No, that's he knows. He knows yeah. what's going on. Welcome back to the Wacky Wonderful WiseWorks podcast. All you guys, gals, geeks, and goofballs, hello, fellas. We made it. We made it. And, and another day, another dollar. <laughs> another day, another dollar. I, I don't know, know about you, but I at least made two dollars. <laughs> I, mean, I think I made significant money this week. Uh, and I think I'll things. make some significant money next week. I think next week's paycheck is going to be nice. Sick. It, it'll be okay. I think... Okay, it'll be good. I, I mean, we're working. We're 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 clocking out. How how many hours? I when we were driving to Noonan, yeah, yesterday, John, Mark, and I, we were going to that pawn shop. We saw you driving back. Mm. Oh yeah, yeah, I did. And that was at like too. that was at like five o'clock, and we um, saw you driving. Back. Did you see us? Yeah, I'm I'm getting consistently. I was about pointing and laughing. Six six to seven hours of overtime each week. Yeah, I mean, nice. I'll clock, I'll clock out, and it'll be like, oh, you know, you worked nine and a half or ten hours, and I'm right. like, all right, awesome, cool. <laughs> yeah, I'm, that's gonna be a nice pay, paycheck, uh, right? Um, so I wanted to, uh, you know, outside of the, the paychecks, mm -hmm. I did want to bring up a cool, a cool, interesting new uh, hobby that I've okay. enjoyed doing the past yeah. twenty four hours. You, yeah, show us. You sneak peeked us. All right, so I wanna. So check Don't out this video. Up. Check out this video. This is the machine I got. So well, to tell you the backstory, my grandma has five um, full eight millimeter film reels mm -hmm. that's been processed. It's just the film, right? Yeah. So you have, it has to get digitized. So I thought, well, they have a bunch of cool digitizer machines these days. Why don't I ask for one for my birthday? And I can digitize all this cool eight millimeter film. I think it's like 30 minutes a reel. So I've got one reel done, but check out, look at the machine first right here, right? You can hear it. Wait, so this is the process cool. of when digitizing. When did you pick this up? When you were, you. <clears throat> so this is, uh, this is my birthday gift that came in the mail yesterday. And so that I got to work sick. on it. And this is some film from. Uh, vacation that my our family had back in the day this is when wow. our mom was like six years old right? wait wow. a minute wait. that okay i don't want to i don't want to did you guys off. see that hold on hold on did you yeah. see that this is like this is what the eye is looking at the film so there's that's like really cool preview, and that's the film passing through that frame by so frame the, i don't want to i don't want to uh graze past the, the digital stuff We're, we'll watch some stuff you have but it, it's joseph's birthday week we didn't even write we didn't we didn't oh, yeah, even, it is. We didn't talk about When was your birthday? About, it's going to uh, be the 19th. It's not So yet. when this oh, comes wow. out, when it's passed. Out, yeah, it's passed. 19th? What's today? Today's the 15th. Oh, wow. Um, it, that's, that's not important. I did want to show you guys a little bit of film that was Wait processed a minute. from You're this. turning 28. I'm turning 28, yes. 28. You're right. Um, but check out some of this film that has been processed. So this is our, that's our mom over wow. there in the corner. Look is there a way that. you could crop it to make it just the, yeah, just yeah, the, I'm going to crop it. I wanted to, I wanted to capture it wide so I can get all everything. of, get everything. Yeah. So the full frame and I can put it in, you know, Premiere Pro editor and actually, actually. Gosh, I love the it. edges. The edges are so cool. Yeah. Oh man. Well, I would so, wait a minute. We, I. Do you want to get emotional, Joshua? Anybody. You didn't have not sent this to anybody, have you? Not yet, but by the time this comes out, they will. Is this but, all you okay, have? No, I, I only have one reel love. done. Can I? Need... Is there more that we can watch? There's a ton. I wanted to skip forward and make Joshua emotional by showing him some video of our grandpa. 
Ooh, show him, show him, show him. Okay, so this is this is everybody sledding in Pennsylvania, right? Wow. Okay, so that's that our grandpa. Incredible. Um, so that is that's actually our that's our mom, our uncle, and Judy, who's our our aunt in law. That is uh just okay. So that's our grandpa sledding wow. down a little hill. And there's actually a moment in here that's super precious that did make me feel emotional. All of these are precious. The, the fact that oh. you have film from this time. But check this look out. So they were at the beach. So look at this. This moment with my grandpa holding my uncle's hand. This almost made me cry. Wow. <laughs> have you sent this to your parents? Not yet. No, are I, they, well, by, oh, time, by time please, they see this, they will this. have seen I it. would love to be in person. When they see it, I, we have to be. I want to. There's, be there's so much. There's so much footage. There's, there's four, three hours of footage. But I really, wow. really, really want to be in person when you when they see it. I know they're gonna see that. I really need to be can, in person. Can you go back to that frame where it's just the sun and they're holding hands and they're kind of silhouetted? Right. The the my grandpa. Yeah. So the reason why it's that, emotional. Right. <laughs> The reason why it's emotional, uh, at least for me, is because, you know, I I don't remember my grandpa in person. Mm -hmm. I was alive, but he died when I was pretty young. I was probably like four. So yeah. I've always heard these stories about him. But man, to actually see him like on uh -huh. video, I've never seen that before. Is there you know? any like solid? As him as like a young man. You know? Is there any I, solid clear video of just I told like you. I, I got the machine yesterday. You haven't There's five that. reels, and I've digitized <laughs> one of those reels, and it's wow. 30 minutes each. Wow. Each reel is 30 minutes of footage. So I'm in process. This okay. is all like the same time period, like our mom and We'll and talk is about young. this, yeah, after the podcast. More. Oh, look at this. I... <laughs> it's crazy with these home videos. But wait, wait, wait. Out. Go back. Go back. I want to see that in the car where they're smiling at the camera. Right. Okay, so that's our grandma as a younger lady. Wow, and at, Jer and her her look, her parents are in the front seat. Look at and that's her grandma in the back seat. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, and they roll off. And, oh my gosh! Yeah, wow. yeah. I gotta see if I gotta they see have if they're going on vacation like to Disney. They are. I, I gotta see if my grandparents have film stuff. I know they took a lot of pictures. Dude, if they got stuff. okay, so if they have, so the reason why they have it on eight millimeter. Is because eight millimeter cameras were like the consumer home video cameras mm -hmm. back in the day, right? So, but the problem is, is you have to have a machine to digitize it because when you get yeah. it processed, it's just on a reel. People used to watch it at on a projector, like you'd buy a projector and you'd throw yeah. it on the wall and you can watch your home videos. Mm -hmm. But a lot of those projectors have broken or gotten misplaced. It's hard to find. But and since we live in a digital world, a lot of this film and footage, this eight millimeter film, is forgotten. So mm -hmm. digitizing it brings it all back to life, and you can share it and everything. So I'm super excited about getting through all of this film. But wow! All on the bike. Play play a little bit of this. I want to see some of this. Well, this is a birthday. That's boring. Yeah. I want to show no, you. So I, this is our none mom. of. Wow, she looks just like <laughs> Karina. She yeah, looks she does. just like Karina. But none of this is boring to me. Look, she's in shadow. So let me get, let me find a good shot of her, like her face. Well, okay. If I go back to the beach, I saw this earlier. If I go back to the beach, there's a shot of her running up to the camera right here. So check this out. This is a very good shot, a very clear shot of her mom when she's like probably like six, five or six. I don't know how uh -huh. old she is. But look at that. She looks just like she, Karina, doesn't she? She looks yeah. just like our sister. <laughs> That's our mom when she's little. <laughs> We've never seen footage like this. This wow, is the first time. Wow. Isn't it nuts? Look at that. I think I found starfish. You, on, you, here's the randomly. thing. You could play this. You could just play this for like probably three hours on on a loop and i would enjoy it <laughs> this, this is so is it's a time awesome. capsule it absolutely and the cool thing is you know you know working with this machine i it's super fun and I, this is why i'm interested in film right now because mm. it's not only a time capsule but it's like there's like a barrier to entry in order mm -hmm. to watch it, you have to invest money. You have to do work. You have to process it. So it's like b digging up buried treasure. It's not just like, hey, here's a treasure. It's like freaking no, I have to excavate it, you know? And a <laughs> and lot of what we see, awesome. a lot of what we see nowadays of kind of like historical stuff is like, here's a replica of that car. Here's right. a replica of that bike or of that bathing suit. Exactly. And 
you know, when you have this film and this footage, you can go and you can watch exactly, you know, people living with this stuff and mm -hmm. in this time and doing things. The birthday, birthday footage, old <laughs> birthday footage is some of my favorite stuff. I, I've, I always thought the birthday footage is the most boring part of the old footage <laughs> but it's what it is is it, it, why does everybody have birthday footage everybody everybody right. has birthday footage it's because they want to eventually go back and re-experience their kids being happy and smiling being and being little and eating yeah. cake and opening presents i remember blowing out candles yeah i remember from like one to probably, I mean, it had to have been late teenager, but like, let's just say 14, 15. Mm -hmm. Every single time it was your birthday, you had to take a picture with your cake. And we had like, you could go through and see like one with his cake, two, he was with his cake. And <laughs> just, we had all that footage. And right. our grandma would like, she would make these special cakes. She'd be like, what do you want? For your cake she would make it in like a specific design of like i don't know she put like a couple of toys on it or something and you would have to take a picture with this cake that she made mm -hmm. and we had so many of those well and you know it's probably less for us right. but it's even or it's more for us than it was for our parents and grandparents but it's even more for you know young kids william you open a phone mm-hmm any of our phones and you'll find footage of William. Yeah, it's exactly. It's so easy. Whereas for your parents, it's how much hard. Are, how much footage are we going to have of them? I think I think with this, we'll probably have uh -huh. a total a to a totality of like 3 hours cuz there's 5 reels. That's and that's incredible. That's that's a lot. I want to get some footage. I want to I I know my my grandparents have to have footage of our mm -hmm. family mm -hmm. of, of Grandparents usually hold on to these reels. Yeah. Like they usually uh, hold on like, to them even if they think they'll never see what's on them. <laughs> my aunts and and uncle and especially on my dad's side, I'd love to see some footage of my uncle if there's any. Right. It'd be awesome. Well, I I enjoy doing this process. This this is my first time actually working with film, like mm -hmm. real film. I'm gonna call so, my dad after this cool. and ask him. Yeah, <laughs> ask him it, if when I, when he's when he's when he's helped my grandparents unpack stuff if he's found any eight millimeter reel. I right. don't even or know. or super eight. I could do super mm -hmm. eight as well. Yeah, this is that. I don't. I don't even know what to say because this. I was not expecting this at all, and I didn't. I. I. There was weird kind of talking about this before, but like mm -hmm. we're actually watching it. That's a little bit weird. <laughs> it isn't. Um, it? <laughs> yeah. It definitely is. Uh, it it brings up some interesting emotions, but you know, that I just thought that would be fun to talk about. Not only to show mm -hmm. you the cool look of the eight millimeter, but also like the machine, the process of getting it on there and everything. Yeah, the, that was um, super cool. What what do you got first for us, Wyatt? I'm curious. You, oh, do you want to jump um, into something that we've kind of been anxious? To yeah. Talk about? Um, Please say this is our first segment. I keep trying to hit the button like I'm gonna <laughs> like I'm gonna go to the next slide. All right. Uh I think it's I think we're talking about the bear. We yes. are, we are. <laughs> like I got so much one. to say about this. Okay. All right. So where do we start? start? More excited for the bear than his family. <laughs> right. <laughs> his family. No, family. no, I was overwhelmed <laughs> with that. Joshua's like bear, Joshua's I like, I have nothing to say. And then Josh, he's like, I got so much to say. <laughs> Jeremy Allen White here is Josh looking at those reels. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no. I was overwhelmed for that. I I'll, I'll process that off off film. Yeah. Off, off screen. Let's with the family, in. as you should, yeah. I'll you know gather <laughs> not, around with not for me. I like to share it with the world. <laughs> um, and, and but no, I got so much to say about this. But do you have anything specific you wanted to talk about, Wyatt? Before I kind of, um, I just kind of want to uh start at the beginning of the show, mm -hmm. uh, because I remember you started watching it before me. Yeah, and you said the first half of the show the. Um, first three episodes, in first my opinion, were slow and mm -hmm. took a second to get back into it because mm. I don't think – so we didn't see any food stuff, I think, till episode three. And I was like, yeah. this is a show about food. Why are we not seeing that? And it was because they kind of had to establish – this se This season is definitely a little bit different from the first season mm -hmm. of – it is it is about the restaurant, but 
they're not in the restaurant the whole time. So it's not, it's more about the characters that they've already developed a little bit. And yeah. they develop them a lot more with this season, especially in the later half. So the mm-hmm. first three episodes were slow, in my opinion, or at least the first two. And yeah, it, it is a lot of setup. It is a lot of setup. But I think what the show does really well um, throughout is character conversations and yeah. character interactions are so solid that even with the first few episodes, I was just enjoying hanging out with the characters. Right. Them yeah. trying to solve problems, trying to uh, figure out how to do this business thing, and it was it was quite enjoyable. But I think you're right. I think some people, you know, may not enjoy it because it is a lot of setup. Yeah. Uh, and then you know, I think after after Marcus's episode, yeah. where he goes where he goes to learn how to cook some some interesting desserts and things. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, you, yeah that that episode good episode was good. That episode and you know what the episode is slow, but yeah, the way that good. it the way that it does Hooked, everything engaged so engaged like you were right there even though even though it feels like it's moving at a boring pace even I down to helping some old guy out of a fence right what was <laughs> yeah, that? that was a little but bit odd but it's like that was out of nowhere but it, it's important because those are things that sometimes happen that we have interactions that we can't really explain mm-hmm. yeah and i think it also so i mean i've got so much to say about character development but mm-hmm. like that in itself built character development for him Marcus because of his mom's situation and like yeah. everything he does for his mom and, uh, and it pays off at the end of the show Oof. yeah in a in a very ominous way yeah uh Will Poulter coming in here he did yeah, know. yeah. Um, just just being a, a fantastic character yeah. he didn't <laughs> do a lot with he didn't do a lot it was it was good to see will poulter in this serious um chef uh kind mm-hmm. of dramatic role rather than this you know goofy kid type character that we see him in a lot of like in the so Millers have, or even as uh in marvel these days we have this um we have these kind of interactions all throughout this season of, mm-hmm. uh, and we introduce sort of a new character that we're we're yeah. just that's going to influence our main cast. So okay. Will Poulter, um, uh, I don't know the name of the guy that Richie interacts with, but also the 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 head chef that Richie interacts with. Yeah, there's quite there a few characters the, that he interacts in with. Episode. I'm yeah. just now noticing that in this restaurant they have an every second counts sign up on the wall it's yeah. supposed to be the same yeah. restaurant i think isn't it is it no that's because no no the no because the ladies yeah. restaurant is in yes like chicago or something yeah right yeah yes i think uh i think personally i i got most engaged on this episode yeah like once yeah. watching through the first the second season i was thinking like man this is kind of i wonder if this season is going to even be close to mm-hmm. what the first mm-hmm. season was and then we got to this episode and something about this clicked and i was like oh yeah, yeah. this is the episode it, it's like it finds like... the groove and mm-hmm. then you're hooked for the rest of the season mm-hmm. but um but and for some i don't even know what about it and i think that's what's so cool about the show is that like you get fascinated and interested and you feel an emotional connection with the work that these characters are doing mm-hmm. the food the the process even just the way they're interacting with each other on camera and you don't fully understand why <laughs> you know what i mean yeah you're just hooked and i think yeah that's i mean that's what this show does so well and and i think why i've <laughs> found it so interesting from the very beginning was that these for some reason, I don't know how they do it, but these character interactions and conversations where in, in another show they might be um they they might feel forced, they mm-hmm. might feel way too long. These ones they'll have they'll have five to ten minutes of just two characters talking to each other right. and it feels engaging. Right. feels yeah. fun. It, it almost feels like you are in the room, like you're smelling everything that's going on, like you're hearing kind of the quiet. Like when these yeah. two are there early in the morning and they're just making stuff. Yeah, or the specifically the episode where he's um, 
cousin is peeling the peeling the, the mushrooms the with mushrooms. Head chef. You could smell the mushrooms. So good. You so can good. hear the silence. Like maybe there's stuff happening in the background, but they're they are so early. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And because we've all had these late conversations with one person, mm-hmm. you know, or it's early in the morning or it, whatever, whatever it is. Yeah. They do it so well. It feels like you're in there. And I think that lends itself very well to um, the the mid-season episode. Seven Fishes or yeah. something? The seven Fishes, right. which while, you know, where these conversations are so real and so engaging, the discomfort that the show will put you <laughs> in in this episode, and even in the last season with, with some of the episodes, but this right. episode – is brilliant it really is so it's a brilliant episode i (laughs) i was talking about with this with wyatt i understand what they were doing with this episode of it gave character development and Mm -hmm. it progressed characters i did not like this episode because that's crazy (laughs) honestly that's crazy that's crazy it did not progress the restaurant or that it mm. all it did was build give character development and reasoning behind why certain characters do certain things and so that i didn't care for and i got bored on this episode but then they come back with a very strong episode with four but like here's the thing there's 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 something that happens a lot in tv shows movies books called retroactive storytelling where (laughs) later in a season or a show they'll go back and be like oh yeah this is something that happened in the past (laughs) that you haven't known about up until now that gives context and it always feels incredibly forced but the way that they've written this show that when they introduced this episode they introduced characters into this episode and interactions and things that happen that track naturally And they did this in the first season. I just don't think they dedicated a whole episode to it. I, I yeah. don't remember where they did show that like one scene with John Bernthal and kind of the family right. in it. And but this one. is this is really super important to I think going back and watching the first season. Mm-hmm. This I think informs a lot of the character motivations. It and that's does. what this show it is does. about is you know, uh we talked about well, let's, you know, let's get through this. This moment in particular, I think, is really strong. It's really solid. There's a lot of moments in this episode that are um, kind of heartbreaking. Right. And, you know, and, and, and uncomfortable in – we Josh, Josh and I talked about this. There's uncomfortable in how, how close to reality it gets. Yeah. Right. How many times <laughs> – how many times have, have you had an interaction with a family member – or your your mom is trying to make Thanksgiving dinner or Christmas dinner and is freaking out or, you know. Well, not in all families, like but that. a good chunk yeah, of family. A good right. chunk of family. And, and it's not like all the time where like we're not saying that every mom is bipolar, but <laughs> very often your mother, you know, becomes bipolar at big family events right. or something. <laughs> becomes and bipolar. like it's so weird and, and then – you know the the secondhand embarrassment, the family members yelling at each other mm-hmm. because there's so much <clears throat> there's so so much stuff that they know about each right. other that they disapprove of, that they're angry about, that they're hiding. Like when Odin Kirk and Bernthal start yelling at each other, throwing forks at it, you know, and <laughs> and he's calling him nothing, and he's like honking at him like a goose. Right. It's it's like they had this perfectly civil interactions up until this point. Mm-hmm. And just everything comes out. Yeah. Well, okay. And this moment where he shows him the picture of the restaurant and he knows that he's wrong. Right. He knows that his his brother has so much talent. He has so much vision and drive and he is he is what he is what uh Bob Odenkirk says later. He's nothing. He's he's a nobody and he knows he's gonna be a nobody. Mm. Um 
and and he feels like he's tearing everybody down. Right. Yeah. I think, you know, what you were mentioning earlier about, you know, understanding later, there's so much to Carmen's character that mm -hmm. you get context for from this episode. So yeah. much that it doesn't have to be told to you, but you just understand, like, why mm -hmm. he reacts in certain ways. Like, the conversation later on, I can't remember if it was the last episode or the second to last. I think it's the second to last. Um, but he he's... Carmen's talking to Claire at their house at the house mm -hmm. and he's like um he's waiting for the other shoe to drop right yeah in yeah the relationship you wouldn't understand that concept as fully without knowing his family dynamic mm -hmm. and what he's yeah. always been around and I think that's I think that because he's just always waiting and bracing himself for emotional catastrophe yeah you know? mm -hmm. and also that we I was talking with either Wyatt or John Mark about this, where like the at the end when he's in the freezer and he has that conversation of I need to I, I'm I'm sorry because I was spending all this time with Claire and not working on the restaurant. And John Mark and Wyatt, I think they were they were like, oh, that's dumb. They should have just said he should have just went out and apologized to Claire and and kind of tried to get back with Claire and I said well hold on because because of the first season and because of this Carmen is in this battle of choosing something that's good and is good for him of uh, being with Claire but then mm -hmm. he also has the restaurant and it's not just about something that I've always wanted to do of own my own restaurant this he it's, it's very deep emotions with kind of proving his brother right mm -hmm. of this re if i don't get this restaurant to be successful i'm proving my brother right I, i'm letting my brother down and my brother died for this and so i'm letting my brother down on one hand if i don't choose the restaurant mm -hmm. and i'm letting claire down if i choose the restaurant instead of claire and so right. he's in such like a dynamic like i can't it doesn't feel like I can choose one. I can't choose both of them. Um, I have to choose one because that's the only well, one that I can. I, I, I would like to set the record straight. I, we weren't we weren't saying this isn't deep or that we were we we never said this is dumb. Mm -mm. No, no, and, no. I was just kind of yeah. I rising. paraphrasing. I think we were saying that you can have both, and he doesn't, and he yeah. thinks that he can't. Yeah. Um. But you're right. There is a there's a lot of context, even going back to the the very reason that he left of trying to prove his brother wrong, of so, wanting almost to compete with him and 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 prove that he can become like a, an incredible chef. Mm -hmm. There's so much context yeah. here in the reason that he's making this decision. I mean, just the conversation that he has with Richie. Right. Where they're screaming at each other. And yeah. He, he says, you know, you know, uh, um, um, I, I don't, I don't know exactly what he says, but he calls him Donna. He calls him his mom. Yeah. Yeah. And he's <laughs> like, what? What did he's like? Did what you, did you just what, say? What did what you did say you to say? me? Right. And right. It, it's this. It, Which, by the way, fantastic from Jamie Lee Curtis. So good. Jamie Incredible. Lee Curtis. I don't know how <laughs> Jamie Lee Curtis didn't get nominated for an Emmy with her performance in this show. I know. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't, did, did, Bernthal did. He did. Which and we're Bernthal, going over later, I think. Bernthal was good. Bernthal was good. I love him. But There's Jamie Lee Curtis. Great. So many characters. But Jamie Lee Curtis. That could have been nominated. Great. Here. Odenkirk yeah. did fantastic. But Jamie Lee Curtis just... Mm -hmm. blew her role out right. of the park. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And that was, it kind of leads into an, something that we also were talking about with when she comes to the restaurant at mm -hmm. the end, the final episode, where she says, tell me, she's talking to uh, the uh, the brother-in-law or the, her wife. The brother, uh, yeah, what's, what's her, her son-in-law? Her sister's uh, husband. Sugar's husband. Name. Yeah. Let's and... See. She says, uh, Is it tell Pete? me it's okay. Yeah, Pete. From Pete. Yeah, she says, tell it me Pete? that it's okay not to go into the mm -hmm. restaurant. And him saying like, no, just come in, come in. Because he doesn't know how to deal with the situation. And yeah, and, and John Mark didn't like how 
he how he dealt with the situation. Yeah, but um, but I think it, it that's makes most sense for his character. Human yeah, yeah, yeah. And normal interaction, like especially for human somebody would would be like, "Come in, come in." But mm-hmm. he didn't know what to do in that situation, and so it uh, felt especially for somebody good. who's he's a son in law and mm-hmm. he knows how his wife feels about her mother. Yeah, mm-hmm. and he knows, and he's clearly seeing some emotion from the mother and. He's uncomfortable. Yeah, but he also he's wants making, to do what's best for his wife. Right. And 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 yeah, and that's why when he comes back in and he's crying, he's he's got this conflict in him. Mm-hmm. And I I'm really happy that they did that because I liked him in the first season right. as kind of wow, her husband's kind of boring. <laughs> but clearly he loves her so much yeah. that he's willing to protect her from her own emotions yeah right from her own family and that is i think going into the third season that is gonna carry oh. a lot of weight and uh just there's so much that we could talk about yeah with this show. well yeah we but so, need to so look look bit. before we wrap this up we gotta mm-hmm. we gotta acknowledge you know what did you guys think of sydney's character and richie's character because those are two big sydney, ones richie we have not touched on marcus really. Yeah. Well, Sydney's like uh, the co-lead, and we yeah. never mentioned her. You know. Um. Well, she, she her story I think resolves. I her story in this season resolves really well of her dad's worrying about. Yeah, her and her dad's relationship, and I think that's kind of the one relationship that resolves positively. Mm-hmm. Um, is her and and her dad. Because every other thing, you know, Richie, Rich, everybody in Carmen. Carmen's relationship is strained. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Marcus and whatever's going on with his mother, it, if she perished or not. Uh, uh, Jamie I, Lee Curtis and Sugar and Pete. I will say one thing about her character, though. Sydney's? Uh, yeah, Sydney's. Um, now that I'm thinking about it, it felt a lot of every time we saw her. She, now, when she was by herself, she was doing restaurant things, and that mm-hmm. I think she was the one in the story overall that kind of brought the food back into the show a little bit. Yeah. So that was together. good. They, they used her character to do that when she was like visiting restaurants, trying to figure out the mm-hmm. menu, but I didn't like it was, I'm Oh, get mad at Carmi for something. I'm sorry. Then get mad at Carmi again. I'm sorry. It felt very back mm-hmm. and forth to where I wish, I wish there was a little bit, more to that and i don't i understand they they had to cut it off somewhere because they couldn't just do everything but i wish maybe there was like her really getting mad at carmy and then maybe staying more mad than just like this back and forth i'm sorry yeah get mad sorry get mad i wish there was a little bit more in that department but right. she, but her character was good when they used her to bring in like more food and stuff and we can't obviously we can't overlook uh, Richie's involvement. Richie's yeah. episode is yeah, he's my favorite character. So good. He's my favorite. It's such character. a good episode of just how he he starts to understand that you know this is this this industry is something special. There's part uh, there's a part of it that he's really good at it. There's mm-hmm. people that really love what they do, and at the end he's like and and, and all all while. You know, the Christmas episode built on his relationship mm. uh, with his um, with his ex. Right. And then this episode furthers it. And he realizes that he's good at something. And any any kind of, you know, he, he blames Carmen of like, you know, I know you sent me here to just like get me out of the way. Yeah. And, you know, whatever. But and then he realizes that. No, he he believes in me. He believes in him. But he also oh, so this relationship good. with Carmen too uh is there I I was talking with Wyatt about how at the end too when him him and Carmen get into a big fight and you see Carmen's in the freezer and he's kind of yelling at the door. He he's also yelling at Carmen to be like what'd you do to Claire? Why yeah. what'd you do because he I think sees in himself they didn't make this very known but i think it's just kind of in the background it's like he sees 
Carmen's going to mess up a relationship. And he had in this season, you see where he had messed up a relationship mm-hmm. already himself. And so and he, and he blames himself and he hates himself. For yeah. It. So he was like, Carmen, don't mess this up. Yeah. He this girl is really fantastic throughout the show. Yeah. Yeah. It's and, almost like they're destined to screw things up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and that's, I think what the interesting part of this show is, and it, I don't know why we'll talk about this later. It, this is clearly a very dramatic show. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Ethan was jumping into uh, this season for the first time. He didn't watch. The yeah, Ethan. Had, and he just walked away from episodes. That was too much. I don't like. He, the show. Yeah. <laughs> even at the end, he was like, that's way too much for me. Mm-hmm. Ethan. Ethan's um, doesn't enjoy as much with the uh, with the heavy, dramatic, yeah. right, uncomfortable situation kind of stuff. Right. The, the kind of chaos of this show. Which mm-hmm. I get, I it, it's not necessarily for everybody, but man, does it, it tell it, a good story? It, it does. tells a good story and tuggies at the pool strings and mm-hmm. does it well. There's yeah. so many unresolved things that we could talk about. Yeah, we could talk about uh, that for a while. But I'm going to, I, I like on. this, this season really sets up, sets up the third one to be really incredible. Yeah. Um, and maybe hopefully wrap up the show. All right. Gosh, I hope it wraps up the show. So I'm <laughs> three I was gonna like, amazing seasons of a show would be incredible. Right, right. That that's that's the ideal situation. It seems mm-hmm. like. Yeah, I think this this season was almost a perfect season, except for it starting off very slow and then building mm. into a better sh- better season. So I would knock it down a few points if I was gonna like rank it on how good it was because yeah, it i missed slow. i actually missed a good portion of sydney's episode and i don't think i really missed that much didn't miss too much, much. Uh, I, because I, I came in at the end and she was doing some some menu stuff but mm-hmm. i did later in the show i didn't feel like i missed anything there was a it was, it was mostly a long, her putting together yeah right it was a long section of her trying foods and being like hmm Mm. you know Mm. and thinking and walking around and thinking and going like hmm and trying foods and Mm -hmm. it was it was kind of long that section uh but yeah i think um i think overall you're right this sets up a nice season season three we need to move on yeah Mm -hmm. i could talk about that forever thank you patreon thank you karina for being a patreon supporter you're the best. She enjoys best. Um, all kinds of cool stuff, like early content, her name getting shouted out in the podcast. Yeah. She enjoys all kinds of benefits, which you can as well. I mean, you can get the podcast a week early, videos, exclusive content, all at Patreon. If you go to the link mm-hmm. in the description and sign up for the tier that best fits your content needs, just like Karina has. Thank you so much for being a Patreon supporter. Is there is there a baby in the background? Yeah. Is there? Yes, there's a baby in the background. I want to see the baby. <laughs> well, but... maybe afterwards. Yeah, afterwards, <laughs> yeah, see the baby. She's already fighting sleep, so it's oh, no, it's going to be a process. Um, so let's go ahead and move on to the next section. Well, actually, Wait, I wanted hold to on. bring up something. Yeah, you wanted to talk about Mission Impossible, right? I did. I went and watched it last night. Okay. Uh, Mission Impossible. This is, uh, I mentioned, we t- talked some on the pre-show, which is on Patreon exclusively, but mm-hmm. I think this might be the th- my third favorite Mission Impossible movie. So when it comes to Mission Impossible, I think this is the third one is probably, well, th- this new one is probably the third mm-hmm. on my list. I would say first Mission Impossible, Third mm-hmm. Mission Impossible, and then the seventh Mission Impossible. <laughs> That's oh, okay. how I would rank wow. it um, as top three. The the cool thing about this movie um, that there's one downside that I feel like some people probably wouldn't like too much, but in some ways I enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. It was a lot of member berries from the first movie. Yeah. Okay. So we bring in um, familiar faces, like I think was it. Rutledge is that his name? Let me look up yeah, the cast yeah, yeah. real quick. They're back. They're all back. <laughs> um, Mission Seven. No, Hold yeah. Do you think? Do you think? I don't want. I know this was probably done a little bit before, um, the C nineteen that came out a couple years ago. But it almost feels like when, like, I guess Tom Cruise had some time, some downtime of not making anything during that. The mm. um 
pandemic and then just like created just took the time to perfect a couple movies like top gun this and is just like figured out knew what he was wanting and just had some extra time so he just used that to perfect to really focus in yeah focus in on what what needs to be done for these movies and to make them really good movies. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. So probably have plenty of time to storyboard uh, a lot of what dead reckoning one and Mm -hmm. and two are kind Mm -hmm. of going to be, which, and, and, you know, also planning out missions and stunts and stuff. What do we got? So we're talking about uh, agent Eugene something. I can't read that, but but he's the, he's, he's the director of the CIA from Mm -hmm. the first movie and he's the same character as this one. So they bring him back. Um, there's also, you know, so we got, you know, Rebecca, um, the Ilsa character, we got Mm -hmm. a new character, Grace, um, that we remember, uh, Elena from the last one, one. um, this new character, Paris, she is kind of creepy and also kind of badass. <laughs> okay, <laughs> like I'm and, seeing a lot of like like Nicholas Holt, right, um, right, Angela Bassett, Carrie Elwes is in this. Yes, there's a lot of people in this. So yeah, he wow. he's he's in the beginning, a little Whoa, section close to the yeah. beginning and at the end. So um, there's a lot of people in this film. I will say, uh, with the member berries. So just uh, this is small spoilers, right? Mm-hmm. So the camera angles, I mentioned this in the trailer, right? Uh, the camera angles are all very similar, like the Dutch angles, yeah, the, the close ups with the like the these kind of shots, you know, mm-hmm. and um, even the production value. So you remember at the beginning of the first movie, they're, you know, walking they're trying to do the mission and then they go outside and there's like all this, you know, ethereal fog and stuff. Mm-hmm. It's like a very similar vibe. Very, it's really cool. There's this awesome fight that Tom has, that Ethan Hunt has, with two characters in this very narrow alleyway, Mm -hmm. and so it's like alleyway is like this freaking this wide, right? (laughs) And so they have a camera, and he's like doing flips over them using the walls to his advantage, or or getting hit into the wall, and it's really. Uh, claustrophobic but it was such an interesting scene but yeah. there's so many things that feel similar um, in the first movie there's a death of somebody he loves or a mm-hmm. faked death on a bridge right mm-hmm. outside at night in this mm-hmm. new town this uh, this the city very similar situation happens okay. um, uh, you have <laughs> and this is kind of a bigger it's in the trailer some so you see a moment but you know the first movie ends with like a big on the train fight and mm-hmm. heist kind of situation it's how this one ends they're on a train there's a train fight there's a heist so there's a lot of a lot of looking back at the first mission do impossible. we get a rappelling down bump bump Bum, no, bum, we didn't get a repelling uh, down. Actually, I think they replaced that with the uh, the parachute scene <laughs> with okay. the, the driving off the cliff. Uh, no, it, it's interesting that we would at the end of the series, you know, harken back to the beginning of the series, right? right. Uh, and I don't mind that as much. I I, I do like to kind of end things by looking back and seeing kind of where the where this you know film franchise came from yeah and and some of the things that you know perhaps made people enjoy it so much yeah so i haven't seen the movie yet but i'm looking forward to seeing i think the the kind of villain slash uh big problem right Mm -hmm. the thing the problem that's dangerous that they're trying to get control of or trying to stop it's it's a good formidable enemy that actually makes sense for today's world, right? Mm-hmm. So it's is, I, it's very cool. I, is I like Vanessa it. Kirby good or bad? I could never pin that down in the Let's first see. one. Or in the um, first one she's Vanessa in. Kirby, I... Was she good? Was she bad? Did she help him? She Did, is she middle of the road. I always... Oh, is she, she's yeah, like, she just kind of like, like she, a, She's not... She's not she doesn't have ill intent for you, but she's very selfish. So okay, at times gotcha. she acts in her yeah, own yeah, interest, yeah. which is what they don't want her to do. Right. Right. So she's middle of the road, 
it, that and she's she's like a yeah. problem wild card character. Okay, um, cool. I couldn't figure that out in the in Henry Cavill one. Right. That's and they they kind of alluded to that, but they really nailed it nailed her character down mm-hmm. as who she is in this one. Um, but yeah, the only my only big uh, my only big cri- uh, problem I had is Luther is awesome there with you know Benji through the whole film. And doing his Luther thing at the computer and stuff. And then Mm -hmm. the climax of the film, when he needs help, like when they, he really should be there, you know, the big last mission, it's like Luther disappears and he's not there. And it's just Benji that's doing that side of it. Oh, and they don't explain where he is. I I might, maybe I zoned Mm -hmm. out for a minute. There's Mm -hmm. like a, there's like a conversation that Luther and Tom have about, um, about making like trying to tell Tom Cruise or trying to tell Ethan, look, you're going to want to do this. And there's like two scenarios. You can do this. You cannot do this. Mm -hmm. And this is like what the enemies predicted. So either way, the enemy wins. So the only way to do it is to not do either of those things and keep state of the mission because it's, Ethan's emotionally invested. He's he wants to either do one of these two things. So he's mm-hmm. like, you have to make sure it doesn't end up this way because it, it's Luther being smart, you know, and yeah. giving advice to Ethan. And um, and I can't remember if at the beginning I, I might have missed it. Maybe at the beginning of that conversation, he gets pulled away to something else because it's that mm-hmm. point where he just disappears for the rest of the movie. <laughs> right. But he was there the whole time before. So I don't know. I I must have missed something. But like the end of it, like the climax of the movie, Luther's not there. So mm. bummer. Yeah. Um, Interesting. But Benji is. Benji's like doing in a self-driving car, like doing his computer stuff. <laughs> okay. That's cool. Yeah. So and there's also, you know, some new interesting technology. It follows a very similar format with but, 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 you know, mm-hmm. um, it's like they try to do a mission. It looks like the mission's going to work. Oh, it looks like the mission's getting struggling and then realize it turns on its head. The mission was going to be a failure the whole time. You know what I mean? What, and then give us a, give us a rating. What, what would you put it at roughly? In, in, in out of a, one out of 10? 10. Yeah. 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 I'm putting it at like, a, see, I put Top Gun at a nine. I'm going to put this at an eight. For okay. like Mission Impossible movies, thoroughly uh-huh. enjoyed. It doesn't feel like, you know, Dead Reckoning or mm-hmm. Ghost Protocol. It's like the filmmaking style changed up and harkened back to the way the first one felt and looked, okay. you know? That's so cool. it has a new vibe, a refreshing vibe to this new film. Uh, that makes so, me interested. Yeah, yeah. And also they do have a car chase and it is long. But there's a fun twist to it. <laughs> okay. And it's not mm. just the typical like Tom Cruise finds a car and then he, he does bad, you know, mm-hmm. he, you know, he, he escapes, but he's like really good at driving. This is clumsy and hilarious. This yeah. whole car See, chase scene. And the I reason think- why is because there's a character, Grace, who he kind of gets attached to and, mm-hmm. they're, they're, you know, going back and forth with. She doesn't know how to drive cars or to do car gotcha. chases. Yeah. But she but he has to walk her through it. He and there there's something <laughs> that's a spoiler a, that's that's funny that hinders him from being able to be the one who's driving. <laughs> you mm-hmm. know what I mean? Okay. But he is with her. So it's like she has to drive, but she's she's clumsy. Like she doesn't know how to do it. And it's now, just it's a fun, interesting new take on a car chase. In scene. all in all uh um self driving car car chase where like they program one car has like something in it that they need, like a piece of information or something like sitting in the seat, like a briefcase. Mm-hmm. And so they program it to like, you need to get to this destination no matter what. And then the enemy programs a car. You need to crash that car no matter what. <laughs> that would be an interesting car chase scene of just two empty cars going at it. <laughs> mm-hmm. I want to no see people that. Involved. That would be awesome. It, just just driving noises, <laughs> you know, and then right. some interesting things where like the the car AI technology has to like the one it, you could give almost give the car AI's personality, right? Where the the hero's car is obviously like trying to avoid hitting people, mm-hmm. and the villain's car has been programmed to it doesn't matter. Yeah, right. 
And so now the cars almost have their own personalities as they're doing this thing. <laughs> I think it would be a really fun scene. Yeah, uh, you know, it it you lose the touch of the human interaction. No, no, that. no. It, it's not the human. It's the. Uh, I mean, people get attached to um, anthropomorphizing things, right? And if you anthropomorphize the cars as like they almost are, one of them's like avoiding people and and trying to almost be safe while the other one is crashing into stuff and hitting people and it doesn't matter you're giving the cars personalities okay uh (laughs) this is an entirely different idea that i'll have to run through with you (laughs) later because i think this would actually make a car scene car chasing interesting to me i don't know watch this new uh mission impossible Okay. Yeah. Tell me that you don't have a good laugh and like kind of mm-hmm. a good time watching this car chase scene. Because yeah. it's not it's not just more fast and furious crazy stuff. It's it's actually fresh. It's actually okay. interesting. I cool. I enjoyed it. It is and fresh. I, it takes something that you think's just going to be like, "All right, here we go." And you like you're walked through it in mm-hmm. a new way and you're like, "Oh, was that it? That's the whole car chase scene. It was a good time. You know what I mean? Good. So, um, so yeah, I I know that's that's one of the things you're worried about. You're always bored with why. Yeah. But overall, um, so, I think it's good. I think it's fun. Um, where our next topic, I guess we're just gonna kind of we'll go through it kind of quick. I, they're a little bit back to back, kind of. Uh, mm-hmm. I I think I think the first one plays into the second one really well okay so the the next topic we're going to talk about that that bob Iger interview <laughs> right right you guys may have seen this you may have not seen this are we going to watch the interview joe do you have that yeah i got up? it here i got yeah, it let's, here. let's play a little bit of it disney animation yeah. is the loss of john lasseter years ago for well, example been a blow that you haven't been able to recover from well first of all there's a there the, the the studio and its movie assets are number one at the global box office this year so far um, that said, we're extremely realistic, and I'm very objective about that business, and there have been some disappointments. We would have liked some of our more recent releases to have performed better. Uh, it's reflective, for, not as a problem from a personnel perspective, but I think in our, in our zeal to basically grow our second? content. Yeah, yeah. I love what he said uh, about <laughs> the, the studio being number one in the box office, the studio and its assets being number one in the box office so far this year. It's like, yeah, um, a couple, a couple movies, you because know, because you paid the most money to have it there. Well, one, you, you, like one movie throws a net and they catch fifty fish, right? right. And that's really good. Ooh. And then Disney throws forty nets and catches fifty-one fish. Right. That's is a, that that's success? Exactly. That's not success. Mm, that not that success. is that is manufactured numbers it's like of course mm-hmm. if you have 41 nets sure yeah you got and you're you catching got one here. more fish than that one person who did a really good job of catching their you fish get angel studios who released you know sound of freedom that's mm-hmm. a one net a one net kind of situation against oh, disney no, they had they're they beating disney. done some other things but eh, angel studios has done stuff but right now they're one net they have a movie that's like hitting big you know yeah significantly to serve our uh, mostly our streaming offerings we ended up uh taxing our people with- which by the way uh all of these except for guardians are disliked and flops and um, i these. would say all of them all of them failed um yeah, yeah so you got you got except maybe medium. guardians guardians came Guardians came close to its budget, yeah, but I yeah. don't know that it exceeded it. No, I don't it, know that it, they really made money on Guardians. People like the second Guardians more than the third, but they don't oh, hate yeah. the third. But no. I don't hate the third. Yeah, I, that's I what I'm saying. Like, most people say the they they don't hate the third, but out of all these, like they're all they all didn't make money, mm-hmm. and all of them are negatives audience reaction well, it was clear that guardians or disinterest people, people weren't as interested right so a got, lot of people went to see it right because right. they wanted to see the third guardians movie but it wasn't as many as it should have been hmm. exactly 
way beyond in terms of their time and their focus, way beyond where they had been. Marvel's a great example of that. They had not been in the TV business at any significant level. Not only did they increase their movie output, but they ended up making a number of television series. And frankly, it diluted focus and attention. And I think you're seeing Correct. that is, I think, more the cause than anything else. And, cause and Pixar. Mm -hmm. He didn't just delude focus and attention. Right. Mm -hmm. The shows were bad. Yeah. But and should, too many. Did anybody watch She Hulk or, no. or Secret Hawkeye? Invasion? What have you heard about Secret I, Invasion? I've heard that Secret Invasion I've heard was nothing. boring. Yeah, I've heard like Not nothing about it. Look, the, all of their stuff. I mean, they had WandaVision, which was pretty cool. And people, it yeah, was well people received. Enjoyed it. That was and several Loki, years ago. Loki, Loki was interesting. Was and pretty well interesting. Received. The majority of it, but I, yeah. I would have to say that largely in part because of the cool. The cool concept mixed with Owen Wilson. That was mm -hmm. kind of cool. <laughs> and then and people like everything Loki. past that. And people like Loki and everything. But the big issue people had was, you know, the falling in love with the female Loki, like yeah. himself. And it was That's, whatever. that kind of tracks for Loki, and, I guess. And also kind of like nailing in that he's a bisexual, mm -hmm. which I guess is that comic lore? Uh, uh, that's That's like historically, I think Loki was kind of free like in in norse mythology loki right. was kind of free with whatever um but cool. you know besides that everything marvel did as series has been complete trash i mean you got you mm -hmm. came out with loki then you dropped hawkeye and hawkeye was terrible everything past hawkeye has been yeah horrible. everybody was looking mm -hmm. forward to the hawkeye show and it was so bad all right so let's bad. keep going um i mean we've talked through the years there was a time when a pixar opening was a was a real event did it suffer as a result of during COVID when you were going direct to consumer? For example, I think it was Red or one of the very yes, big there were three. Went. There were three Pixar releases in a row that went direct to streaming in part because of mostly because of COVID. And I think that, you know, may have created an expectation in the audience that the, they're going to eventually be on streaming and probably quickly. And there wasn't an urgency. And then I think there was some I think you, you'd have to agree that there was some creative misses as well. Um, oh yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I, look yeah. At, I look at so that's a big statement. Just saying that there were some creative, creative misses. misses. It's he like they, he were trying to blame it on COVID in the audience, yeah. and then he said he slips in there. Also, there's some creative. He shit. knows. No, that's he knows. He knows yeah. what's going on. He Pretty, definitely knows. He might as well just say like, "Well, this show that came out way before the writer strike, he's just blaming it on mm -hmm. the writer strike." Be like, yeah. <laughs> be like right. the writer strike. Oh, you know the right. Hawkeye show. Yeah, yeah. It was well. The writers are on strike right now, so it's hmm. because of that why the right, Hawkeye right. show was so bad. The company is a hundred years old. Walt Disney went into the animation business, starting with you know shorts in the nineteen twenties, and obviously his big first feature with Snow White in nineteen thirty seven. If you look at look at his history, there were peaks and there were valleys. Uh, every valley was followed by a peak, and I've, I studied it very carefully. It's true in. My predecessor, Michael Eisner's days, too. He had great halcyon oh, days of beauty. And Notice he didn't say Bob Chapek, his predecessor. Oh, he doesn't consider it. That no. was a sabbatical, man. Yeah, exactly. That was not. Mm -hmm. like, yeah. That's a blip that was, on the radar. He, he made a political decision to leave Disney, um, let Chapek take <laughs> any of the fall for anything that happened during COVID stuff, because it, all the movies that he mentions... Right. Chapek was in charge of. Yeah. Yep. And um, he's, that's why he's probably more willing to call it creative. And then misses. after COVID, he comes back and he's saying stuff like this. He looks like a hero. I this don't know. Is his, I'm just, this is his comeback interview. This is him being like, this yeah, is, it, it, Disney was ruined while where, I was gone. Where he has to right. address all of these things and make them right. So, but he looks yeah. fine because he yeah. wasn't there during the time. And he's saying right. a lot of, of good things. A lot of stuff that people want to hear. So. Right. The Beast and Little Mermaid and Lion King and just this tremendous success. And, and then there's a dip. I'm not suggesting we're necessarily in that, but I'm also not suggesting that we're at a peak either, that we have some work to do there in terms of improving our creative, our creative output. Did the loss of Lasseter, mm -hmm. was it a blow no, to the company the over time? Look, there's a lot of talent at Pixar. There has been turnover as well, not just John, but there's been other turnover too. And that may have had some impact. May. So, but your cause... <laughs> did did John Lasseter die? Uh, let's see. 
is John with Pixar? No, I don't think he died. He was uh, he was like me too, wasn't he? I see. I'm not sure. People at the company were saying that he was being um, like sexually harassing people with no proof, mind you. Right. Uh, and he was fired, and they haven't made a good movie since. Right. So yeah, he so, hasn't died yet. I'm, He's I'm, 66 years old, though. I'm not. You know, I'm not saying that they there's not uh, issues often with people in power, people in charge. There are. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I think a lot of the credibility, especially the Me Too movement, um, has been called into question. And the this this kind of just firing people with no no trial, no evidence, Mm -hmm. no. You know, it's just guilty until proven innocent. Right. Uh, I think that was, that's probably a lot of where we're losing stuff. John Lasseter brought so much to this company. Yeah. Yeah. He was out. uh, I think he was out at, how, how, what year was he out at? It says on, in Wikipedia, I think he, he left Pixar in 2018 Mm-hmm. So, yeah, a handful of years ago, and I, I, I don't know what was coming out with Pixar 2018, but, um, but let's keep going. Confident that the production of Pixar animation, for example, and the Disney studio overall is going to, to continue to be strong. Correct. Mm, Marvel and Star continue, Wars. Uh, he's just flattering him. Continue to be strong. Like, what are you referring to? Like the past 20 years or the past five? Because the past mm-hmm. five have been catastrophic. Have not been strong. Too much. I mean, you almost indicated kind of it's it's been a little much. Do you pull back in a way? Is yes. It, you do. Yeah. This is interesting. Yeah, you pull back not just to focus, but it's also part of our cost containment initiative. <laughs> that, spending that less, making, not, spending that's less. very that's very important. The cost containment. Cost containment. That means initiative. like stop giving all of our money in away. They, like we have they to contain have, they've the had money. Multiple business sink. meetings about the cost containment initiative. <laughs> right. They're recruiting like the Avengers initiative. <laughs> They're trying to get people on this team to contain costs. Um, Funny. You know, uh, side note, did you guys see that Steven Crowder video about the McKenzie and company? Have you seen that? No. no. So they're big business and they've worked with Disney in the past, but McKenzie and company is basically a, a company that helps you with your company. Like ah. it is, it is big business corruption at the highest scale. Mm-hmm. And I wonder if they're back doing business with them for this containment you know that would that would track. Wait, yeah. is it company, kind of like a McKenzie company? Basically, comes in, you pay them tons of money. They come in, they look at your books, and they say you need to fire ten thousand people to keep. Yeah, yeah, keep kind of like Parks and Rec situation. Sort of, but it's their big business, like crazy. Mm-hmm. It, it's it's really dark. You should watch the Steven Crowder video, whether you agree with him politically or not. He did an interesting video this week. Uh, exposing McKinsey company. So check it out, but let's finish this on what we make and making less. Now, of course it used to be that that some of that stuff would then go and make run spending less and making less. So focusing on, on trying to make better stuff uh, for less money Mm -hmm. and less stuff. I think and making less. Mm-hmm. Now, of course, it's, it, but... it's been a little much. Do you pull back in a way? Is yes. It... Not just to focus, but it's also part of our cost containment initiative. You know, right. Spending less, making, spending less on what we make and making less. Interesting. Now, yeah, that, that's, that's a novelty idea these days. <laughs> of Disney. course, it used to yeah. be that some of that stuff would then go to Netflix and you'd make a lot of money from selling it in different distribution channels. Now it all just goes to, to Disney+. This- Plus. Do you ever do you, think who? about oh, how okay. you shouldn't I'm, have I'm, done I'm that? Just interviewing him. I was going to say, what this guy is just breezing past things that he should maybe be digging. Uh, he but, he's a CNBC yeah, I'm like, news anchor. I I, I noticed that after I was he's like, no, he's a no important guy. Uh, yeah. Not not that you shouldn't have done it, but there's still 
I mean, the old model worked pretty well. It's kind of interesting because I think if we did, well, the old model worked when it was a blend of basically business models. It wasn't the only model. The licensing model was part of a, a collection of models. I think if we hadn't done it, everyone would be saying, why isn't Disney going to the streaming business? You know, and as it turns out, I think we made the right decision there to go into that business. It will be a growth business for us. We will turn it around. I'm confident of that. It will become profitable and it will deliver growth for the company. And it will be an important business because that direct-to-consumer model where you have a relationship with your consumers, which we lack, frankly, as a company, except in our mm. parks and resorts business, that will oh, be of value. All of that is super important. He just admitted that Disney Plus isn't profitable. And when, he also admitted that they have not been connecting with the audience. And they have a strained relationship with their audience and, and yeah. accusing them of being, um, you know, racists and things like that. But <laughs> no kidding. No, this is super important that he is admitting that Disney Plus isn't profitable right. when people have been have been gaslighting the public about. Disney Plus for a long right. time is saying, it's no, it's like, super profitable. It's look, super profitable. It's not profitable. Yeah, no, it's everybody, everybody, we have the numbers, right? Because mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. online. We can just go and see, this is not working. This is not profitable. And then a bunch of articles come out and say, everyone who's saying that it's not profitable are, you know, racist and, and, and wrong. And, and, <laughs> and, then, and then it comes out, he actually just admits it. This is like, this is propaganda Wait, being straightened out. an old right? white guy is racist? <laughs> no, no, no! They're calling us. Racist. They're they're calling everyone who says that this Disney's not working and they're failing, and uh, basically racist or just basically all the ways to say you're wrong and to yeah. get the attention off of them being a failure. But yeah. isn't it interesting right? though? Isn't it interesting though that people have been calling out Disney for so many years, and it it's finally reached a point where they have to admit stuff the CEO that we've been saying for a long time that people on the internet have been talking about and been upset about for a long time they are finally admitting guilt right and you know and Bob Iger and bar of, it's barely at that and in some ways I, I respect it but it's it's been a long a time coming move. It's, it's a, business a business move. It's a they business move. They have to do it. They have to admit the guilt. They have to admit. They have to say we're going to pivot. We know that we're doing the wrong thing. <laughs> we know that we're not connecting with our audiences. Yeah. Can right. we just, um, in, in this video, just like put a, a video of uh, this interview and then just show Ross being like, pivot, pivot, pivot. <laughs> It's, what's that, uh, Friends? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's from Friends. Yeah, I thought so. It's one of them trendy memes where they're carrying yeah. a couch. We do um, need a, yeah, yeah, put the pivot in there, Joe, do that. <laughs> Freaking do not just give me editing assignments. No, no, no. Please put the pivot meme in there. Whatever. <laughs> just Freaking, edit it in. Whatever. There's a... Uh, we'll, we'll clap right here so that you freaking, know exactly where to put the raw. No, no, you're, you're drawing too much attention to it. <laughs> Good grief. I Although it's a business move, it is a step in the right kind of business moves they need to be making, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, that's as opposed to what making. they have been doing. And that that you know fluffer of an anchor mm -hmm. was not quizzing him hard. I think he was nervous. Did you call him a fluffer. I did. <laughs> that's <laughs> funny. He nothing against the guy, but he was soft, soft, softball. All of and it was all interesting. Of his Bob it's Iger interesting. is the one who outed himself and went harder yeah. on the company. It right? was so interesting how these questions are so easy to dodge and avoid. And Bob's just like, no, Bob's yeah, you're taking right. It darker, right? Right. But even it, 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 this is going further. Even news channels admitting that there's something wrong mm. because the news channels have been not doing that for a long time. Yeah. Yes. And and even even again, when they're admitting that they're wrong, they're still lowballing these questions towards them. Like, right. how do we maybe maybe kind of maybe if you're wrong, kind of maybe if you guys aren't maybe <laughs> making so so much money, maybe as you kind of were, but now we're. Like, do you think that you know his, you will continue <laughs> to be a serious success maybe in the future? <laughs> to get success and money, right? And right. and can can maybe we rely on? On maybe some good articles about yeah. the, uh, maybe us too. That that's <laughs> the thing. Like all the things that the audience we feel like we need to hear coming mm -hmm. from Disney, 
Bob Iger brought up. He yeah. was not asked those questions yeah. by the reporter, right? Yeah. And I um, think it's probably just nervousness because Bob Iger and Disney is Ben. They have such a big reputation. He doesn't want to mm-hmm. be offensive, and they have such a big, you know, media influence. Not just with the front facing Disney, but Disney Company owns everything. They own major uh, networks like what is it? Um, what is it? ESPN is all the mm-hmm. sports, you know? Um, yeah, and they're merging Hulu, a they lot of Hulu. stuff. Yeah, they own Hulu. a lot of parts of a lot of places like 20th Century Fox. Mm-hmm. They they own so much, and they have so much in everything that it's not just Disney. It's control over like the entire media system. I mean, CSNBC might be partially owned by Disney and that might be why they are actually getting an interview. Yeah, I was, I'm looking up this now. It just says um <clears throat> division of NBC Universal News. CSNBC or C- yes. CNBC. CNBC mm. is part of the NBC Universal News Group. Wait, so it so it's, so it's I, Universal, not Disney. That's what it says, yeah. Okay. Hmm. That's interesting that they would be uh, talking to Bob Iger if they're going to – well, maybe not. I don't know. Who knows? Yeah, it's, it's news. It's news. Um, but yeah, that's uh, – overall, I think that's a good – that is a good sign that they're, Bob's trying to get – even if he doesn't believe it or feel like you yeah. know, he owes anything, at least he's saying the right stuff, and maybe I'm, they're going to steer the content that way. What? I'm curious – like what people think about this I, I definitely if whether this is made into like a reel or um or just a clip or something right uh, or if you're just watching the podcast and you've gotten to this point i'm super interested to see what you guys have to say mm. what do you think of this interview um do you believe him do you trust him <laughs> i don't I, I don't trust the guy like as far as entertainment i trust i guess maybe he's he maybe he knows the business but yeah. right th- there's just so much history with Iger that uh makes me wary yeah yeah what, that's true how does this uh go into the next segment because you had, oh um wasn't there more to this or just so kind of something different this is super interesting um so Recently, I don't know who dropped it. I want to say it was the Daily Mail mm-hmm. dropped these photos of a new Snow White movie. Now, okay. you guys may be thinking, um, wasn't Rachel Zegler supposed to be playing Snow White? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, this doesn't look like Rachel Zegler. That's what I thought. That's exactly what I thought. That's what um, I'm thinking right now. This looks like somebody else. And... That's important to keep in mind. But they were saying, <laughs> look at this new Snow White adaptation. Now, this... Okay, so there's a lot to go into. Yeah. Okay. But um, it was mainly this photo and the next photo. These are the seven dwarves. <laughs> um, huh? Okay. So there's, a, <laughs> there's clearly a lot that needs to be deconstructed here. First... There was a big controversy about these two photos of being like, really? This is what we're doing with Snow White? Um, she's... Uh, 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 the dark complexion of Snow White aside, these are some very interesting dwarves. Mm-hmm. One of which... Only one of which actually, you know, could be considered a dwarf. As the and, stature of such... And that sparked a new controversy of where are the little people in entertainment? Mm. Um, why are we why are we doing what Disney does with you know redheaded characters and race swapping them? Why are we putting you know normal people in where you know we could be putting in actors with dwarfism? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So. There, that controversy started going. People talking about this. People talking about the forced diversity of the seven dwarves. Right. And then uh, a new thing came out. Uh, Disney said these are not from our movie. Interesting. What? Disney's like these are not from our Snow White movie. 
people were saying maybe this was i think gal gadot was working on a snow white movie and maybe this was from that <laughs> what is this from then uh and then and then if you go back to that first picture people were saying that it's like okay well that makes sense this clearly isn't rachel zegler and then other people were saying well it's it could have been one of her stand-ins yeah that's what kind of what it looks like. right like a stunt double or something okay so now I don't know what to believe. So what are we getting at here? This, these are apparently po- photos we that have, are or are not from set. We for have Disney multiple production. controversies going on here. <laughs> are these photos really from the Disney adaptation, live action adaptation? Um, uh, it almost the seems like diversity issue and the the little people in acting issue. Mm. Like it's what, hard to say. And 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 then you go even a step further of the proportional dwarfism to uh improportional dwarfism <laughs> right where where uh peter dinklage kind of screwed a whole bunch of uh of of uh actors with dwarfism out of the job by some of his comments about proportional to disproportional <laughs> this is it, it, it's a whole thing it's almost too much to get into yeah but yeah what do you guys where where do you where are you sitting on it do you think this is is this does this track with disney it's this, almost the like, way this looks doesn't this looks like people in halloween costumes yeah mm-hmm. this 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 There's almost seems like off about everything with this i i hate to say it because this is weird this is a weird thing but it almost seems like you know a couple of years back youtubers were making these videos of like I want to do something crazy and make it look like a celebrity did this. And so mm-hmm. people will be like, why did um, this celebrity do this crazy thing? And it was like, that wasn't, it was a somebody faking, faking something. Yeah. And now so I, that's what it kind of seems like. That's what it feels like, doesn't it? But I, I wouldn't put it past Disney. I wouldn't to put it past, up. not, not even just Disney, but uh, other studios. If this mm-hmm. is not Disney, then it could be that other studio with that that Gal Gadot could be working with, or somebody else who's trying to make this and trying to uh, essentially. I don't put it past Disney seeing what they did with Peter Pan. You know, to do no. something like this. Yeah. All of the all the dwarves aren't dwarves. They're. It's like all the lost boys aren't boys. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah like, exactly. Uh, it it. I don't know, freaking at this it's point. It's not, it's not, it's all a walk, it's not isn't a political it? thing. It's not a bigotry thing. No. Yeah. It, it isn't, isn't what we want to have the right people for the right roles. Haven't we always talked about this of the right yeah. person for the right role? And I think if a person, if a little person wants to play one of the seven dwarves, mm-hmm. shouldn't they, shouldn't that be a job option for them? Yes. yes it, and if be. and if a little person wants to be in a movie without it being mentioned that they're a little person, that should be an option as well. But I don't think we should take roles that they would play well and give them to regulars, us, like tall people. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest. Uh, I think I feel like everything's a wash with yeah. Disney and with this. And we have no idea what's going on. Yeah, don't know who this is. is Weird, and uh, don't know who pretty people are. She's pretty, pretty. but like, look at she in that in that blurry photo. She's very pretty. It's a cost. It's a Halloween costume. Yeah, but and that's the other thing people were saying. It's very much like a Halloween costume. It looks well, and she's clearly looking at the photo too. She, Mm, they're all looking. Using for it. Yeah. So yeah. Maybe this is uh, AI generated art. I'm gonna say this, nah, this, I'm gonna say this, this definitely is not AI generated. But I'm super curious as this story develops. What's the answer? Who is this from? Why does that guy have so much rope on his waist? <laughs> <laughs> Just because he's everything angry. about it. Is he? Um, you think he's grumpy? Look at his face. Of course. Uh-huh. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. And he the may, guy in front of him is grumpy. definitely dopey. Um. I'm going to call this fake. I'm going to call this fake. You think it's fake? I, I think, think it's, it is. I think it's something fake too. I don't think it's <laughs> fake. I think this is from a studio trying to do a thing. I don't know that it's Disney. Yeah. I think okay. it could be a different studio, maybe a foreign studio, something. But yeah. I, I do think this is a real thing. Indie, indie films don't count. Indie films don't <laughs> indie count. Film. Yeah. Right. No. 
Okay, so uh, we'll we'll see on that. I would we'll just, try to keep you updated. All I would that just blew my mind because <laughs> it's that, so easy. like because I started digging into it and I was like, what is going on? <laughs> Why? What? And what? and then you know you have Bob Chapek being like, we're gonna pivot, and then these right. photos <laughs> come out, and then they're like, no, this isn't us. <laughs> We've already um, pivoted away from this, right? But let's let's really quickly we're coming to the end of this podcast. Right. Let's really quickly go through some of the Emmy nominations. Right, right, right. Um, which is gosh, I I don't know. They 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 for some reason they kept every time the bear is mentioned a bunch. We talk about mm-hmm. the bear, but it's always in like comedy. Right, outstanding right. comedy. Right. The bear, really? Yeah, the bears in. Why is it not in drama? Isn't it a dramatic show? Yeah, it should be. Why is it classified as a comedy? Right. Okay. So, um, so I've seen almost all these except Ted Lasso. I haven't Mm -hmm. seen Ted Lasso. So, uh, and and I've sampled Barry. Okay. I am gonna say we're just gonna sift through these different categories if that's cool. Yeah. Um, I think the bear wins. I think the bear wins this. I don't know enough about you know what you know what. Jury Duty came out of nowhere. Jury, Jury Duty, Duty, yeah, the marvelous, marvelous Miss Mabel and Abbott okay. Elementary. I don't, are I don't think people great. are talking about those as much as Jury Duty and the Bear. And, okay, and, and, and even Ted Lasso. And, but Wednesday as well. People love Ted Lasso. Man, and Wednesday. I think if I'm going to be honest, I think Wednesday takes this one for comedy, though. Yep, I think Wednesday Best takes outstanding it. Outstanding comedy. It might, yeah, as an overall category thing. Um. Best uh, outstanding lead actors, male lead. Um, I I'm gonna be honest. I think uh, Jason Sudeikis is gonna take this one. Uh, Jeremy Allen White is good, but yeah, I've heard more about Jason Sudeikis's performance in Ted Lasso than I have any of these others. Right. Martin right. Short is good, but I don't hear anybody talking about his performance in the uh, Only Murder Only Show. Uh, yeah, I watched it. He's good, but dang it, if if well, he's only Short, murders in the building, good. Mm-hmm. If, if all, only murders in the building, both seasons just kind of come up. It's like okay, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. <laughs> like it's nothing amazing about it. But but Jason Sudeikis, right. people have been talking about his performance in Ted Lasso. Mm-hmm. All right, well probably Ted Lasso, uh, Jason, or uh, maybe Jeremy Allen, or Jeremy Allen White. If if Sudeikis doesn't get it. All right. Um, outstanding lead actress. Uh, again, we got. So okay, this is interesting. I, I don't know if Jen Ortega is going to get anything. You don't think? I I'm gonna I'm gonna say the people that people that really deserve it. It either needs to be uh, Rachel from The Marvelous Miss Mabel, mm-hmm. or it needs to be Natasha from Poker okay. Face. Those one of them actually deserve it. Yeah, I don't. I haven't seen Dead to Me. I do. Uh, you know, uh, Quinta, I think is how her name is mm-hmm. said from Abbott Elementary. She is good, but she is not award winning good. Like mm-hmm. this is not award winning funny. But as far as well, either. So here's what's going to happen. It's going to either be somebody who is incredibly talented, uh, mm-hmm. Rachel Brosnahan or Natasha uh, Leone. Yeah, Leone, Leone. I think. Um, or it's going to be by popularity, uh, and Which Jenna Ortega, Ortega will get. Yeah. And she wasn't bad in Wednesday. She was very no, good. But I think I think the movie gets. I think the, I, not the movie. I think the show wins an award, mm. but Jenna Ortega does not. That's what I think. Okay. Okay. Um, I think it's probably going to be either Rachel or Natasha. Okay. Let's see. Outstanding supporting actor. Do you guys want to go through this or no? Nah? Uh, um, I, I, really I really want, like want Evan Moss. Yeah. Uh, uh, Batrek from the Bear. I really want yes. him to win. What about James Mar- Morday from Jury? Duty? James Marsden. Marsden, yeah, was uh, incredible Morday. in James in Marsden. in Jury Duty. I I don't know, um, dude. Henry Winkler, uh, in Barry. Henry Winkler is an incredible actor. Mm-hmm. Um, he kind of plays himself though in everything. How did he play that? I didn't watch it. Did he play himself? old jewish know. guy yeah that's kind of his that's kind of his thing <laughs> yeah he's, he's kinda, always yeah he always he's good. the same character he is good. he's good but yeah i look uh, 
I it's it probably should be either um, Eben Moss or it's James. Eben Moss or James Marsden for yeah. me. Yeah, that's those, I agree. Those really two they they stood out. You know, um, a lot but of I haven't seen are, Ted Lasso. A lot of people are talking about Abbott Elementary. It is good, but it's like, you know, what was amazing? Mm-hmm. The Office. Mm-hmm. Abbott Elementary is good, but it is another formatted it's another similar. The office. Mm-hmm. It's another The Office exactly, mm-hmm. and so it's not. It's good. I don't know out of all the sh- comedy shows if it's top, but mm-hmm. you know. I think the originality of Jury Duty and The Bear probably help help the those two supporting actors. Right, right. Yeah. Um. So, outstanding supporting actors, uh, female. Whoosh. You know who didn't? You know from Ted Lasso, uh, Juno mm-hmm. Temple. She deserves one from. <laughs> From the, yeah, from the uh, offer, the, the offer. She really does. <laughs> she deserves a reward from the offer, yeah. which she did not get, or no one got nominated for. I but, wouldn't be surprised yeah. if she got it. I um, think she probably deserves from, it. From from the footage I've seen from Ted Lasso, she's really good. She's incredible. I think she deserves it. Uh, I'm sure whatever she does, she's incredible at. I haven't seen Ted Lasso, so we'll see. But I think she deserves one from a previous mm-hmm. role, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see. Go to the next section. All right. Outstanding guest actor. What do we say? John Bernthal? I if if if, if we were to picks, give this John Bernthal. If we're gonna give this to somebody from the bear, Oliver Platt absolutely kills his role. Okay. Yeah. Just yeah. L- uh, between Bernthal and Platt, mm-hmm. Bern uh Platt has more screen time to really go in hard Mm -hmm. on some of his some of his lines like when he talks about he talks about he talks to um it's a really big moment for character development he's talking to um uh carmen about um what are people you know what what do you have to do to fix your mistake and he talks about Mm -hmm. the chicago bears and how you know, one guy was making terrible decisions. Yeah, right. his head wasn't in the game. But then, every fortunately, nobody remembers that because everybody blames somebody who caught a ball that right. they shouldn't have caught. Some a fan, and he said, "You know, the moral of the story is you are the guy messing up, and you can't be that because you're not going to have somebody in the stands who's going to take the heat." Right. Yeah, uh, I really liked his character. I would say he's so good. He, he, he went definitely over shone, Bernthal, in my opinion. He's shown bright mm-hmm. in season two. Uh, Pedro Pascal for the Saturday Night Live. What the heck? No thing from Saturday what Night about, Live. What uh, about you've seen getting... Mrs. Mavel? How'd Luke Kirby do? Great, great. I mean, mm-hmm. uh, I think personally, I think the best thing for Miss Mavel is Miss Mavel. That's my opinion. She's incredible. Okay. Everybody on the show is great, though. I mean, mm-hmm. it's all fantastic, and enough people don't watch the show. Like, a lot of people don't watch yeah. it, but everyone should because everyone will enjoy it. And yeah. uh, uh, just to be clear, I'm not against Bernthal getting this award. He's no. good. No, no. Yeah, yeah, and, he, and it was very emotional, and, you know, he's always touching his face or his head. Right. Somebody else's face or head. <laughs> he, he is very handsy with his. Yeah. With his <laughs> All right. But Let's I like the it. next one. Uh, outstanding guest actress. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't see Jamie Lee Curtis here, so I don't <laughs> care. Yeah, that is right. true. You're, you, you guys might notice that a lot of a lot of what we talk about is, is going to be the bear. Because. <laughs> But we did I mean, this last the show year too. Been, yeah, that's the show that's been that's been on our minds. Yeah. All of these are Ted Lasso, except for one Poker Face and another Saturday Night Live. Mm-hmm. Three Ted Lassos. I don't think Saturday Night Live is going to get this. It shouldn't one. count. It um, shouldn't count. All right, let's move on. Um, outstanding director for comedy. I'm going to say, I'm going to give it to Wednesday because we yeah, got Tim Burton. We got Tim Burton. Tim Burton. When has he done a series? No, I don't mm-hmm. think he. And when uh, has he yeah. done a comedy series like Wednesday yeah. was? I this think is Tim really... Burton takes it. I think this is a new ground for Tim Burton, and it was interesting. It was done well, and it was enjoyable. This is a really um, stacked kind of kind of category. Not bad picks it because not bad because picks. these are shows that everybody has been enjoying. It's not yeah. something that's like, oh, nobody's been watching these shows. Exactly. No, these are shows everybody's been watching. Barry Lasso, The Bear. Um, 
uh, Miss Mabel, Miss yeah. Mabel, and Wednesday. Exactly. So, oh, I, the Miss Pat show. I just realized that Miss Pat. Yeah, that's. I don't. I haven't seen that one. Yeah. Well, I not not many people have seen it, but it's apparently hilarious. You guys know Miss Pat the comedian. No. Yes, the Josh one that, that just she, she was on Theo, and they got their uh, episode taken down. No, <laughs> that wasn't Miss Pat. That oh no, Pat. I was I'm, I was thinking of something different. We we Josh had this conversation where I I mixed the person up last time too. Didn't we no, have this conversation on last week? Something like that. All right, outstanding writer. No, let's keep going. Wait, I, no, I'm interested in outstanding writer. Good grief. We can't go through all these. There's like the 50 different categories. I think the, the, bear. the bear takes it. Jury duty is really good, but a lot of jury duty. Jury duty is a lot in the improv. A lot of the improv. I, I think the bear takes it for writing for all me. Right. Uh, it, it definitely went. If the bear doesn't win for writing, holy crap. Yeah. Right. The writing in the show is Dialogue, incredible. Yes. Okay. So let's, let's just do this section then and we'll move on. So yeah. So drama and the associating with drama. So out of all these, I'm torn on the actual people who should win. It's either going to be House of the Dragon or Succession. And I know Better Call Saul might also win. But I think, I think, I think it's absolutely possible that Better Call Saul wins. Yeah. It's because which it's really good, but I just good. better call Saul's not my cup of tea. Mm -hmm. But it is good. I have seen enough of it to know it's. But incredible. a lot of people like Succession. Did you guys see House the, of the way? Dragon. Did you see the way Better Call Saul ended? No. I haven't finished the it's show. It's a really. Yeah, I didn't even watch the whole show. I gotta I just watch watched it. The last episode. It's a really it. cool last episode. It actually is. However, I, watched, I, w I binged through uh, not Better Call. Um, what's uh, what's the actual show? that it's spun off of breaking bad, breaking bad. and yeah. i binged it and so i'm like i gotta hold off i'm watching better call <clears throat> right now um yellow jackets does not deserve it i don't think mm -hmm. white lotus does not deserve it i've seen both of those seasons they weren't as good as their previous seasons um okay. the last of us uh for me and a lot of people disappointment but also a lot of people loved it um i I Star think a Wars. lot of people really enjoyed the last episode of The Last of Us, especially because it's very true to the way that the game yeah. ends. But right. a lot of people just kind of lost interest mid-season. Yeah, they yeah. did. They I'm going to say this. This is really hopeful to see Andor on here because although I don't think it deserves the win, mm. Andor, it's like being recognized out of all the Star Wars stuff. Like Andor is the good one right but this is my issue why would you have you know better call saul has comedy in it um the white lotus has comedy in it sort why of. isn't the bear up here I, I you're right know. the bear is in the wrong category the bear 100%. should be here in the outstanding drama series and i think it would win i don't think i laughed at the bear except for like twice through the whole mm -hmm. season season no. two i Just laughed way more at comedy. the white lotus and succession than the bear mm -hmm. i don't know man uh but what do you guys think who who deserves it um i mean, I mean probably stuff, succession but... or better call saul yeah I'm, I'm, i like I'm house of the say, dragon i'm saying house of the dragon person i like house of the dragon house of the dragon was I, good i don't think it, it maybe house of the dragon definitely ought to win in maybe writing maybe uh costume design i think outstanding uh, drama but as far series. as outstanding dramas series go it's got one season um so? we don't know how it ends whereas better call saul is a complete show so is succession. everybody enjoys succession the ending and complete. succession is a complete show and everybody enjoys the ending all of these other shows incomplete right unfinished that's why i think succession or better call Saul then i'm giving it to category. succession i'm i say succession yeah, takes it because succession go. was awesome okay. um okay so outstanding lead actor not pedro pascal oh i he thought we were you owned it in for last of us um, in my opinion it's it's odin kirk wins this one yeah 100 odin kirk uh, e either odin kirk's gonna win or pedro's gonna win for uh, last of us yeah for because of because of politics you yeah know a lot of people were talking about odin kirk odin kirk deserves Pedro. The win. hold on well yeah i think odin kirk probably deserves the win mm. but i would love to see brian cox get it as well or jeremy okay. strong i would love to see either of them get it 
Um, well, Odenkirk probably. Kieran Culkin it. is from Succession. Yeah, but what, I how think was his character. You think incredible, he was strong? incredible. But I think Brian Cox and Jeremy Strong are a little better than Jeremy Strong's a good actor than that Culkin. I don't think gets enough credit. Jeremy Strong. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wait, did you guys remember seeing him in The Judge, that Robert Dunning Jr. movie? He plays yeah. Yeah. Robert Dunning Jr.'s little brother who has like um, yeah. a mental disorder. Freaking incredible role mm-hmm. that Jeremy did. All right, uh, outstanding lead actress. I gotta say, I gotta say, I seen oh, we're, we got freaking The Handmaid's Tale up here again. Mm-hmm. What, what about goodness. Bella Ramsey? No, all right, I got it. Uh, Sarah Snook from Succession, one hundred percent. Could be. I'm. I don't know about anybody else. I'm a big Melanie Linsky fan. I think she's an no. incredible actress. Look, she's uh, good, but that second season of Yellow Jacket sucked. You don't think was she not good in it? Was she bad? I think they wrote her character dumb. Okay. I, and I, so, like, in my opinion, the emotional depth she had in the first season just deteriorates from season gotcha. two. Gotcha. Okay. So, I, I don't – after season two of Yellow Jackets, I say no. Um, I think a, a probably Elizabeth Moss will get this one. Because um, of The Handmaid's Tale. Her, her per, people like her performance in The Handmaid's Tale. It's not my kind of show, but yeah. I understand that, you know. I give it 100% it. to Sarah Snook for Succession. Okay. Uh Incredible. She plays Shiv. I trust you on that one. Chevron. Shiv. Um, outstanding supporting actor. In a drama. Oh, man. oh, Matthew McFadden from Succession. <laughs> I gotta say him. Uh, Matthew McFadden from Succession is mm-hmm. incredible. The whole, uh, the whole, how many seasons is there? Is there five seasons? The whole time. Mm-hmm. Matthew McFadden is incredible. You gotta give it to him. You got to. Yeah, I don't know. Um, oh, Skarsgård is in Succession? Yes. I didn't he, know that. Uh, yes, just the, he he plays in the last season. He's in the last okay. season. But, cool. And he, he has a good role too, but we're talking legacy characters for the mm. whole season. Freaking okay. Matthew McFadden on point the whole time. And we saw some emotion come out of him in this last season with his marriage relationship with she- Chevron. Chevron, mm-hmm. Shiv, whatever. Freaking deep and beautiful and heartbreaking and terrible at the same time. It was very good. All these White Lotus really characters, good. like, um, you know, Will Sharp, Theo James, uh, Michael, uh, I don't know how to say his last name, but he was from Sopranos. They were Imperioli. all- Imperioli. Right. They're, they're all <laughs> fine. Um, you know, F. Maria Abrams. They're all fine, but- no one stands out quite as brightly to me mm. as Matthew McFadden. Uh, let's see. Outstanding supporting actress. You know, that second season of White Lotus with Jennifer uh, Coolidge? Coolidge. That kind of, I kind of enjoyed that. It, it got her way side. more wacky, and, but they dove into her character in a lot mm. more, and she really went hard. Like she went yeah. hard on that character a lot more than she did in season one, and she had more screen time in season two. So I think um, I from what uh, as I've seen like three seasons, f- three and a half seasons of Better Call Saul, and um, Rhea Seahorn deserves something for her role in that show. She's okay. really good. I mean, maybe it should go to her. She's really good. I she, definitely she, des- she deserves an award. Right. Uh, people I think don't deserve an award is like Aubrey Plaza in The White Lotus. Mm-hmm. She doesn't deserve it because mm-hmm. she basically played like a – she kind of played like a less silly version of herself. Mm-hmm. So mm, no offense, okay. but Aubrey Plaza doesn't deserve it for White Lotus. Well, General for Coolidge in the first season of White Lotus, like, a, you know – Great act, just great acting. Mm-hmm. She really she she has strengths that she plays to that she knows how to play to. Yeah, and season you know? two, it goes. She goes. She goes, she goes harder, harder there, and okay. I I think she probably deserves it. Or I guess you know, uh, Seahorn from mm-hmm. Better Call Saul. I think that's Are we all wrapping this up. Is that yeah. it? Was there any more I interesting categories yes. um, in a drama series? I don't care about look. Yes. Look, I'm not. 
Definitely I'm, not Nick Offerman or I was about to say, <laughs> Nick Offerman's performance was good. Was not it. what I had complaints about. Nick, he's he's very yeah. much an incredible actor. <laughs> um, I don't know, and and I and uh, again uh, also. Um, um, Murray Bartlett, also in Last of Us, the same episode. Both their performances weren't what I had. There's a lot of Last of Us episode. in here, right. but ooh, Lamar Johnson. Ooh, <laughs> yo, yo, okay, the brothers, the two brothers right. as well. That I think was a better relationship, uh, and, and actually, what I kind of compared those two episodes to each other of how you write. Right relationships that people Versus can get brothers. behind and get sad. Yeah. The, the brothers was really a good, I really liked their relationship. You know, now that I think about it, now that I think about it for outstanding guest actor in a drama series, that specific category, mm-hmm. maybe I do give it to Nick Offerman. <laughs> <laughs> He's, it was a good, good guest. Appearance. Although I, I hated the writing and like the concept of that episode. Mm-hmm. He went hard. He, he did, did it to hard. he did it to his he fullest. Went hard. And yeah. so Stop. maybe Nick Offerman enjoys Stop. it. Backs out. Stop. <laughs> maybe Nick Offerman deserves it. I mean, he kissed a man. But that kid, that kid did really well too. He did. Um, he did. What's his name? Kavon Montreal. Mon- Montreal? Montreal. Woodard. Trail. Got a long name. Yeah. He he did really good. And and Lamar Johnson as well. Both of them incredible. All right. Let's go ahead and end it there because we could keep going. Yeah. But, Let's uh, keep going. <laughs> <laughs> we got to end this. We, we're yeah. at an hour 40 something. So thank you. Uh, thank you. Yeah. Thank you, everybody, for watching the show. We hope that it was fun all the way from, you know, watching, watching, um, you know, some home footage. Oh, you want to mm-hmm. see some more of that, Joshua? Uh, yeah, later we will. Yeah, after the show. Oh, we can play some of it as we leave the show today. Ooh, that's Oh, I love the, uh, the aquarium stuff. Right. Thank you guys for watching. Thanks. Uh, Take it easy. Right. Look at this.